So today we're going to be uh, reviewing chapter three. Uh, chapter three uh, has a lot to do with parallel and perpendicular lines. It also has to do with um, distances. It also has to do with angle relationships. And so we're going to go through some. Uh, we'll, be, we'll go through each problem and remember that these problems are very similar to the ones that will be seen on your test going forward. Okay. So uh, first, question number one. It says, given that lines S and T are parallel and the measure of angle 7 is 84, find the measure of angle 10. So we see angle 7 right there is 84. And then we also know that angle 10 is consecutive interior, which is right next to it, right? And they're both inside uh, S and T. So they're consecutive, which means that their values should add up to 180, right? Add up to a straight line. And we could figure out lots of different reasons why that is, but um, we'll just say it that. Okay, so if we wanted to figure out what the uh, value or the measure of angle 10 is, we would subtract 84 from both sides, and we would find out that x is equal to 96 degrees. Okay, so c is the correct answer for that one. All right, let's look at question number two. It says, given the s and t are parallel, and the measure of angle 1 is uh, 8x minus 4, and the measure of angle 15 is 6x plus 24, find the value of x, okay? So if we look at that, we see that we have angle 1 right there, okay, and angle 15 right there. And so we know that those two are, they're on the outside, so they're, uh, and they're on opposite sides of the transversal A, so alternating. They're outside of S and T, so they're exterior, so alternating exterior. And those lines are actually, or the, excuse me, those angles are actually congruent, meaning they're equal. So we can say that 8x minus 4 is equal to 6x plus 24. And now it just becomes a moron problem that we can solve, right? So I'm going to subtract 6x from both sides, and I get negative 2x minus 4 is equal to 24. I continue solving by adding 4. I add 4 to 24, and I find that 2x is equal to 28. Divide by 2. And I find that x is equal to 14. That's all the way over. So our correct answer is B. And that's the value of x. Now, if they wanted to know the value of the angle, that would be different. And then we would take that 14 and we'd plug it in for x. So we do 8 times 14 minus 4. And we'd get a solution, okay? Now, number three, it says, what are angle one and angle five? What's their angle relationship? So one and five are on opposite sides of S, so they're alternating. And um, and um, they're outside of A and B, so that would be alternating exterior alternating exterior so that would be a and I would do if I were you I would review all of those angles relationships remember there's alternating exterior alternating interior consecutive interior like the first problem we did there's also corresponding which would be equal because they're in kind of the same spot right all right 10 and 14 are what we're looking for um, for question number four so let's see, uh, angle 10 is right there, and angle 14 is right there. So those are actually alternating, and they're inside of A and B. So alternating interior is 10 and 14. So that's for uh, number four. Uh, now, number five. Okay, number five says, if angle 6 is 10x minus 6 and angle 11 is 4x plus 18, find the value of x so that s and t are parallel. And so we're looking at angle 6 right there, and we're looking at angle 11. So again, those are um, consecutive interior. They're both inside of s and t, which means that they're going to add up to 180. And so we're going to say 10x minus 6 plus 4x plus 18 have to equal 180. Okay, well, we combine our like terms. We'd say 10x and 4x is 14x. And then minus 6 plus 18 would be plus 12, equal 180. And now what I can do is I can subtract 12. 
and I get 14x. Move it up a little bit. I get um, 14x is equal to uh, 168. Divide by 14, divide by 14, and I'd end up getting x equals 12. So if we go back to the problem, x equals 12, that would be option C. Okay, so that one, because they're consecutive interior, they're going to add up to 180. And so then if we know that they add up to 180, we combine our like terms and solve for x. Now, number six is something a little bit different. Now, number six uh, says, which is an equation of a line with slope negative three-fifths and passes through the point five, negative five? So the nice thing is all of our options, A, B, C, and D, are all in point-slope form. And remember, for point-slope form, you need to have a point and a slope, which we do. We have a point of five, negative five, and we have a slope of negative three-fifths. And point-slope form, remember, was Y minus Y1 is equal to M times the quantity X minus X1. So if we think about that and compare it to our point, um, our x1, y1 would be 5, negative 5, and our slope would be negative 3 fifths. So we're just going to rewrite it as y minus a negative 5 is equal to my slope of negative 3 fifths times x minus x1, which is 5. And so the correct answer to this one would be letter B. Now, looking at number seven, which is an equation of a line with an x-intercept of 18 and a y-intercept of 3? So there's a couple different ways we could do it. The first way is we could actually find the slope between um, our two points. Or B, we could graph them all and see which one crosses at 0, 3, and which one crosses at 18 on the x-axis, right? So let's look at both different ways. So the first way, my x-intercept means that when x is 18, y is 0, and my y-intercept is y is 3 when x is 0. And so if we find the slope of this line, we would do, we could do like 3 minus 0, so y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which would be 3 over negative 18, which would be a slope of negative 1 over 6. And we'd see that the only one of them that crosses or has a slope of negative 1 6 is a. Now, I could also do the same by graphing them. And so just for sake of, of time, we can just graph A and look at it. So if I graph letter A, we said that was Y equals negative 1 uh, sixth X and then plus 3. You'll notice it crosses at the point 0, 3, which we said is a point, And it crosses right here at 18, 0, which is also another point, the X intercept. So that helps us as well. So the two ways to do it are 1. Find the slope in between the points and match the slope, or letter B, graph them all and see where they cross the x-axis. Okay, let's look at question number eight. All right, so for question number eight and nine, we're looking at this um, parallelogram, or I guess 3D figure right here, right? And so we're looking for a segment that is skew to JK. Well, here's JK right there. And skew, remember, is not parallel and not intersecting. So it's like in a different, complete different um, uh, direction, and it's not going to intersect it in any way. So our options are, okay, let's look at our different options. Option A is AB. So AB is over there. So, okay, well, let's, let's go to the next one, and we can kind of talk about each one as we go. Next one is CD, okay, is right there. Uh, and then... We have JH, okay? And then finally, the last one is GF, okay, GF. So we'd look at these and we'd say, okay, well, which one of these is not on the same plane? Okay, so automatically that takes out C and D, okay? And actually, it also takes out CD, right? So the only one that is not on the same plane and not intersecting or not on the same plane and not parallel would be a b and so the correct answer for that one is a b okay now looking at the same figure number nine says identify a plane that's parallel to ace so i'm just going to kind of look at ace is going to be uh, this pentagon right in front and so we're looking for the pentagon on the back so 
it's going to be that one. That's the only one that's parallel to it. So which one of these is, okay, so A, B, G. Well, that's not the plane that we want. Uh, the next one, B, C, H. Well, that's not the plane that we want. Um, let's see, E, F, K. No, that's not the plane that we want. And so G, F, J, we know for sure is, and that's how we label that one as well. So we know for sure that that's also uh, the correct plane that's parallel to it. Okay, number 10. It says, which um, of the equations is a line containing the points negative 3, 13, and 5, negative 6? So again, uh, we have a couple different options. One, we can find the slope. Uh, and then maybe rule some out or whatever. Or we can graph all of them and see which one's crossed. So why don't we start by finding the slope? So if we say that this is x1, y1, and this is x2, y2, uh, our slope is going to be, let's see, negative 5 minus 13 over 6 minus negative 3. And so 5 minus 13 is negative 18. And then 6 minus a negative 3 is 9. And so then we get a slope of negative 2. So automatically it gets rid of A. Yeah, I'll use different color to cross A out. So it's not A. So now it goes to B. And so now I th I'd say there's a couple different ways we could do it. We could put a point into the, um, into the point slope form and solve it out. Or, again, we know that it's three options. We've got it down to three. Let's just graph them and see which ones cross, okay, or uh, go through those points. So I'm going to look at letter B first which is, um, okay, the first one is y equals negative 2x uh, plus 12. Okay, so if I look at these, I'll go back to my home screen. All right, uh, I need it to cross through the point. Well, let's just pick uh, 6, negative 5. So if I was to look at this 6, well, 6, 0 is on this line. So automatically, I know that this cannot be the correct answer because it should be up here, the point sit when x is 6. So we know then, okay, it's not b. Let's go to c, uh, which is negative 2x plus 17. So now we're going to do plus 17. And I look here, and I have the point. If I look real close. I have the point 6, 5. So I look back. 6, negative 5 is... Um, mine. So that's, so we know for sure that it's not this guy. Okay. So then we look at the last one, which is negative 2x plus 7. I go to graph it. Okay. And if I look here, uh, I have the point 6, negative 5, which is the correct one. So let's just make sure that it also has the point um, negative 3, 13. So I go over here, uh, negative 3, 13 is on there as well. So for sure, this is the equation of a line, and that is option B. Okay, very good. All right, go up to question 11. It says, what is the distance from R to point Q? Now, this is a question that comes from section 3.6, which has been a bit of a struggle, and I know it's a difficult section. But the nice thing about these, we've set it up so that they we actually know the two points that we're finding the distance between. We know that we're looking for um, line Q intersects with the perpendicular at the point. Let's see, if this is 0, that would be negative 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 2. So that's, one, that's our point of intersection right there. And then our um, yellow point right there, okay? Our yellow point, R, is actually going to be the point um, 1, negative 1. Or no, excuse me, negative 1, 1. And so we can find the um, distance between those two points. Okay, And so we would use our distance formula. We would do x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Okay, And so I put in see those points okay so I put in okay so x2 uh, if we said this is x1 y1 and this is x2 y2 it would be um, negative 1 minus a negative 4 squared 
and then um, 1 minus negative 2 squared. Okay, and so we would get uh, negative 1 plus 4 is negative 3 squared, and then 1, okay, so that would be 3 squared, and so uh, the square root of 9 plus 9 is the square root of 18. Now, you'll notice that the square root of 18 is not up there. So I know for sure it's not 3, right? And I know it's not the square root of 3. And I know it's not the square root of 8. So I know my answer is automatically going to be C. But let's say that you don't know what that is, okay? You're not quite sure what that is. So what we could do is, is just to make sure. So if I look, the square root of 18 on my calculator is 4.24, right? And three square roots of two, if I do that on my calculator, is the exact same thing, 4.24. So I could check my answer that way, okay? So again, I hope that this isn't um, doesn't give you as much anxiety or stress because I know section 3.6 was difficult, but mostly it was getting the, the two points to find the distance formula between that was difficult. So this should hopefully alleviate some stress with that problem, okay? All right, number 12, it says determine the slope of the line that contains these points. So we're just looking for the slope. So remember, uh, if I let this be x1, y1, and x2, y2, okay, we're going to find the slope in between it. So y2 minus y1 over uh, x2 minus x1. So we would get 20 over 4, which is equal to 5. So D is the correct answer, okay? All right. Now, for the next couple, we're asked to find whether the lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So we need to know, again, um, what's true about parallel and perpendicular slopes. So as a reminder, parallel slopes are the same, and perpendicular slopes are opposite reciprocals, right? And so if we look at them, okay, we're going to look at, first I'm going to look at the slope between B and T, right? And so I would do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And so I would end up getting 4 over 2, which is 2. Okay, so that's for BT. Now let's look at the slope of MV. Okay, so that would be 3 minus 6 over 4 minus a negative 2. And so 3 minus 6 would be negative 3 on top. And then 4 minus 2 would be 6 on bottom. So I'd get negative 1 half. You'll notice those two slopes are opposite and they're reciprocals of each other. If you think of 2 as 2 over 1. And so since those are opposite reciprocals, we know that this one is going to be perpendicular. Okay. So B and T are perpendicular for number 13. Now, number 14. Okay. It says to find the slope in between them. All right, so first off, BT would be 17 minus a negative 7 over 10 minus a negative 5. And so we get 24 over 15. All right, now let's look at MV. That would be 6 minus a negative 10 over 5 minus a negative 5. We get 16 over 10. So we look at those and we say, okay, well, those are not the same. Okay, they're not the same. But I do notice something interesting about both of them, okay? And, and it's a great rule of thumb for you when you're finding slopes, is to reduce them as much as possible. So I noticed that in 24 over 15, I can actually factor a 3 out of both of them. And it ends up becoming 8 over 5. Now, that might be interesting to you because you probably noticed that 16 over 10, if I was to take a 2 out of both, I would get 8 over 5. And so those two have the same slope, which means that these are parallel lines. If you're not quite sure, you are more than welcome to um, divide 24 by 15 and divide 16 by 10 to make sure that they are the same thing, which when you do it, you should get 1.6. Now for the final couple problems, we're going to be looking at a picture and we're going to be talking about this um, angle relationships that are important to know from this section. We use this to prove um, or just give different names based upon some transversal. Okay, so if we look at this one, they're asking about, um, for number 15, they're asking about 5 and 13. So if I look, 5 is right here and 13 is right here. 
So if you think about uh, a transversal cutting two parallel lines as kind of like a T, basically, or like an um, intersection, you'll notice 5 and 13 are in the same part of two different intersections, which means that those are considered corresponding angles. Okay, so that's one of our important angle relationships is corresponding angles. Okay, now let's look at the next one, 7 and 12. Now if I look at 7, 7 right here, and 12 is right here. Now, those two are on opposite sides or different sides of our um, transversal, and they're inside lines A and B. So those would be considered alternating interior ang angles. Okay. So those are alternating interior angles. All right. The last one for number 17, we're looking at 9 and 16. Okay. So use a different color. So 9 is right here and 16 is here and so those are again on different sides of our transversal so they're alternating and those are outside of e and d so those are going to be alternating exterior angles now don't be confused with these problems because when we talked about proving parallels we said that those would have to be congruent but looking at these problems right here, N um, 9 and 16, will those actually don't look like they're the same angle. But that's because um, we never said that D and E are considered parallel lines, okay? So that means that um, 9 and 16 don't have to be necessarily um, congruent. We do know, however, that they still are alternating exterior angles if you let uh, line B be a transversal between two lines B and or D and E, okay? All right, well, if you have any questions um, on the review, you're more than welcome to uh, email me, let me know, and uh, I'd be happy to help out. Good luck on your test, and we're, uh, good luck.